All right, I'm on the phone with uh, Chael Sonnen. We're about to talk some wrestling real quick, so just deal with it. Go, Chael, go. The 86-kilo guy from Russia? Talk to about it. Now I'm interested. Well, hold on. i got to tell you, Frank, that might be the new name of your show. I'm moving forward to deal with it, actually. That, that was a pretty good line by you. But, uh, <laughs> okay, so the World Championships, let me just set up a tiny bit for the listener. The World Championships for amateur wrestling were uh, last week. As a matter of fact, they concluded uh, uh, Saturday morning, our time, here, here in America. So uh, they took took place over to Uzbekistan. So, in wrestling, for me, for me to explain it, and your wrestling listeners are going to get it as soon as I say you're going to get it, but maybe somebody else won't. The story I'm about to tell, I've never even heard a myth, a falsified myth, uh, such as the story I'm about to tell. So, there's a Russian, an 86 kilograms, which converts to about 185 pounds. Uh, in 2012 and in 2013, Frank, he won the cadet world title. Okay. That's how young he is. Now, again, for the listeners, cadet is basically means freshman and sophomore, to put it in, in American high school terms. It means you're 15 or you're 16 years old. He won that. Now, in May of this year, you know, they actually just changed that. Frank, so cadet can kind of go a, a little bit into your 17th. But the point is, in May of this year, as in, what's that, three months ago? Yeah. He turned 18. He's a senior in high school right now. He turned 18. He may be a junior. I'm not totally sure how Russia works. The point is, he's a boy. He won the world championship Come at 185 pounds. On. He technical falled everybody, and he only had two points scored against him, and they were both on push-outs. He, he got to the edge, and he, and he stepped out. In the finals, just so you don't at all think, well, maybe it was an easy year. Not that there is such a thing as an easy year to be the best on the planet, but just so you don't try to think that on me. In the finals, he met up with the Cuban. The Cuban is the defending world silver medalist. And in the 2012 Olympic Games, he wrestled our own Jake Herbert in the first round uh, and beat Herbert, I believe it was 8-2. to two. The, 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 the Russian technical followed him, and the match was over in one minute and 25 seconds. Come on. And it wasn't a fluke. <laughs> I mean, you can't score 10 points on a fluke in a wheelchair, but there was no fluke about it. When, when he got done wrestling, do you remember... Uh, oh, hold, hold on, hold on. There's, a, there's a post on Facebook where the, the, uh, the, the Russian kid <clears throat> smacks the Cuban at the beginning of the match in the back of the head, he clubs him in the back of the head, and then the Cuban goes off and slaps him, like immediately comes back and slaps him, the ref jumps in the middle of it and waves everybody off. Is that the kid we're That's talking the finals. about? Oh my god. That gosh. is the world finals. That's a boy. Jeez. Now, if you go look at the, the little face-off right there, I mean, he's built like Mark Schultz used to be. Yeah. Uh, but he's not... He just, a boy. he just turned 18. That Cuban uh, missed the slap. But, yeah, I want to make this final, uh, th this final point with you. If you'll remember Alexander Corella and the guys after they wrestled Corella, nobody was upset. They would go to their back or he would just destroy them. But they were never upset. They knew what was going to happen. They accepted it. Uh, either before they went out there or during the match, they just accepted it and moved on to the consolations. Everybody this kid be did that. Not one person was upset. Their body language was all the same, which was just pure defeat, and, and I get it. Let me move on. Wow. This yeah. is huge. I mean, this, this, is, this kid is better than the Satyavs? Well, you know, you have to think so. Satyav did it very young, too. Satyav started his run in 96 in Atlanta. In fact, he had uh, Kenny Monday in the second round, I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, Monday. Olympic champ in, in 88, silver medalist in 92. So, uh, and he gave Monday, Monday a pretty good beat, but Monday didn't know who he was. It was a brand new Russian that bust, busted on the scene, and, and he beat him by about five points, which was a big deal, maybe even six. Uh, I have to say that because Satyev was very young. Satyev was, you know, 19 or 20, 21 at the oldest himself. This kid is, is, is the very minimum 18 years old. I mean, he... He, if this is tournaments four months ago, so he's going to need a doctor's note to participate because he's not an adult. Uh, Satyev also never in his career teched, teched his way uh, through a World or, or, or Olympic Games. That never happened. So, 
is he better? He's got a lot of work to do before anybody could make that claim. But uh, if you're asking me to guess if he's going to do that work, yes. I've never seen it. Frank, I've never even heard of anything like it. I've heard guys go, oh, there was this kid that was in high school, and oh, blah, 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 blah happened, and he quit wrestling. It never actually plays out to where he did what this guy accomplished. And, and to be honest with you, if, it's, if it was old Soviet school system, we'd know for sure this kid wasn't even in school. He's been in the, in the practicing since he was, you know, eight years old. That's all he's been doing with a little bit of school on the side. But the new system, he's in school full time, too. So this kid is legitimately a junior or senior in high school and working towards his degree and already got a world medal at the senior level as well as the two at the cadet. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, well, gold. It's, it's um, <laughs> yeah. And he's hit the old school techniques, too. Uh, you know, he starts, he, he talks about that match with the Cuban in the finals. He starts out with a four-point fireman's carry. If you take a guy from his peak to back now, it's four points. It doesn't matter if it's a single leg and he falls to his back, a double leg, uh, an arching throw, it's four, four points. So he hit a four-point fireman's carry, kept the arm and leg trapped, and just began tilting him from there. Oh, my gosh. Let, it was over so in, it, what did you say, You must see it. You must. Say again? It was over. How fast was it done, the match? One minute and 25 seconds exactly. I watched it about four times. Jeez, I got to get on Flow Wrestling. I got to watch this thing. Oh, my gosh. This is ridiculous. I've been just so busy. I've been waiting and kind of just when I got a free moment to go do it. I was going to start doing it tomorrow morning um, when I was kind of finally had a ch chance to take a breath. But now I'm going to have to at least watch this, watch that match tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of guy that runs people off. This is the kind of guy where, you know, when Kale Sanderson came back in 2011, the Olympic year being the next year, we had guys that left the weight class because they just go, what's the point if Kale's going to be there? Uh, he's that kind of guy, except guys from different kinds. He'll, he'll scare the world away. You're not winning a world championship in the next decade. Yeah, yeah, you're like, okay, at this point, I might, as well, I might as well leave. I might as well leave the weight class. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I might as well leave. Go, go do Greco. Go, go do any else anything else yeah anything else but this go play golf <laughs> time to make the mm -hmm. move <laughs> all right well the actual real reason why i called you was talk about battleground you're the new uh, uh you the new color commentator with uh, jim ross um how this whole process come about to getting you know signed up with battleground and, and are you excited to work with jim yeah you know what uh i i go out i'm in vegas uh, and i gotta go cut a little bit away i'm gonna i'm gonna fight rashad evans um, this is in, uh, November, November, uh, 14th, if you want to get specific. And I'm just walking down the, the MGM to, to, to go to the gym. And, uh, I, I run into Kenny Monday and another guy, and that's, that's his partner. And, you know, they're both so humble. They don't really say much that they were kind of working on a project. I wouldn't mind if you were involved. Um, I, I, you know, anything Kenny Monday says, you, of course, say yes to. And then uh, but, but I wasn't fully even there. You know, I'm cutting a little weight. I'm stressed out. I got this fight coming up. And that was the end of it. We just said that in the hallway and and, and wandered off and, and kind of went our separate ways. And they followed up. And they said, hey, we're doing a statement tournament. We, we want you to be part of it. When the Jim Ross factor came in, uh, you know, from a level of excitement, it doesn't get a lot better than Jim Ross. In fact, I can't really think of anybody off the top of my head that uh, that's done what he's done. Here's how Jim explains himself. He says, Chael, did you think wrestling was real growing up? And I said, well, yeah, I did. And he said, well, who made you think that? And I said, well, you did. And he goes, yeah, exactly. So, because he was kind of blackballed from MMA. He's also a boxing guy. He's a football guy. But he knows sports really well. And people just say, well, we can't really bring you over they could give a connotation, you know, that we're, we're doing something staged. And he just said, look, if I can make you think a stage thing is real, imagine what I can do with a real product. Right. Um, yeah. And that was it for me. I, I was just like, right, where do I sign? I, I cannot beat that argument. And I didn't really need to beat it. I wanted to work with Jim anyway. But as far as it went, it's just like, yeah, I, that, that's a bulletproof statement right there. Wow, that's great. Jeez, that's a, you know, Jim, obviously, you know, because I went to school, you know, at uh, started at Oklahoma State and ended up graduating from OU. Everybody knows about Jim Ross that's over there. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a consummate name that gets thrown around whenever you're talking about broadcast work. And, and it's great that you're actually not able to get to work with him. I'd be honest with you, I'm a little bit jealous. I wish they would give, give me the call to work with him because I would have loved to have been a, at least been his broadcast partner for at least one show just to say I did it. That's one of those guys you always want to kind of work with if you've done anything at all in football, wrestling, or boxing, or MMA. Like, he's a guy that that's kind of knows what he's talking about. He's been around for so long, so... How does it? How is this panning out? Like you, you're looking at the card. The card's coming together. I, I know that they're still trying to put the card together a little bit, from what I understand. 
Um, how are these fights starting to match up, and, and what fight are you excited for right now? Well, it, it's really interesting. And, you know, to start from the beginning, it, it's the eight-man tournament. And that's the, the way the UFC started. Uh, you know, that's what Hoyce Gracie went through and won. I had an opportunity when I finally started my career uh, to, to do two tournaments. And they were both four-man. There were four-man tournaments, but that was kind of, that was enough. That was enough that I got it. You know, to fight two men in one day uh, was very hard, and it was also a, a tremendous sense of accomplishment just be, because it was so hard, mentally and physically, uh, to walk back out there. Uh, I know uh, my first tournament, for example, I fought a guy for 18 minutes. Uh, the guy I had in the finals got a choke out in less than one. So he's totally so I'm walking out there bruised up. But, you know, as an athlete, that feels good. And you feel good about yourself when it's over. So uh, I'm getting a little off course here. The point I'm trying to make is it's just very hard to fight three guys in one night. Now, when you look at a card, these guys are bringing in some big names at Battleground. But let's say they did it. Let's say you just bring in eight guys. By the time the second round comes around, if you're if you're a spectator, you know exactly who they are. You know the big names are a lot of fun because we know who they are. By the if, you know you get a tournament, the guy that wins is going to fight three times in front of your eyes in, in a three hour period. The the, the, the semifinals are going to fight twice. The opening round, so the storylines are going to develop and unfold right in front of you. And I think that's kind of a promoter's dream. Uh, it, it's also very rare. For all the reasons I just said, it's just hard to fight three guys in one night. Uh, I was in another tournament. I didn't win it, and it was an eight-man tournament. Uh, in fact, they call it perhaps the toughest tournament of all time. I was in there. Uh, a Russian gentleman that had just beat Randy Couture was in it. Uh, Jeremy Horn, Bob Lou, Trevor Prangley, Forrest Griffin, Shogun, uh, um, and another gentleman out of Brazil that was a very good fighter. And it, at any rate, Bob Lou won that whole thing. And I've never looked at him the same since. Um, I don't care if he loses every fight he ever does. I will always remember that night when he took out three of us in one evening. Uh, somebody else is going to get that feeling at, at Battleground. Purely from a competitor standpoint. I know you relate to this. You're a, you're a tournament guy, too. Yeah. Uh, man, it's a big deal. You know, if a guy gets in the top three, we celebrate it. Uh, the only guy going to get celebrated out of this thing is the champion. And he deserves to be praised. Well, that's crazy. I can't, I can't even imagine, you know, I forget, like, how tough it was to actually be in these tournaments. You know, back then, it was so much work and it was so hard to get anything done. Simply because there, um, uh, there's so much, there, there is so much anxiety going in, but then it's a different kind of shape. It's not real fight shape. It's a different kind of fighting shape because of, you know, how hard you actually have to work to get through everybody. Because it's, it's, even mm -hmm. if you get done quick, even if you finish in, in a minute, minute and a half, you still have to go back out, warm up again, go back through again, and you're going to get bruised every single time. This is a, this is, this is nice. Now, is there, is there a particular pay scale that's going off? Like the winner gets, you know, whatever, a million dollars, or is there, or is it just a, a, it's a, hidden, a hidden bonus that no one really knows about? Well, the big check goes to the winner, and again, it's, it's everything that, that, that you and I first started watching. It's, it's an eight-man tournament. It's 50000 to the winner. Uh, and even when you and I were watching as spectators, there was a pay scale for everybody that showed up. Every match that you win, there's an advancement. Uh, and I haven't been privy to that. I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, but yes, I'm quite sure there's there's an incentive, particularly with you know the big name fighters that are signing up. And uh, you know it's one of those things too, where I look at these guys that are signing up. They see the other guys that have signed up. They know what they're getting into, and they're still willing to say, "I'll do it." And I'll and, and I think I can get to three guys in one night. It's really an admirable thing to to, to enter something like this, but. I don't say that from like a uh, a salesman standpoint. I just mean I know you get that as a competitor. You know, we look at these guys a little different. We look at guys that do that and go, "All right, man, you're you're in the club." You know, win or lose, you're in the club. So, what what are some of the name fighters that are coming in right now? Do you have any any? Of the, I know you don't have any notes in front of you because I kind of caught you off guard with this interview. But do you know in the, in the name fighters that are, that are going to be a part of this? No, it's quite all right. Yeah, I, 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 I know them all. And like you said, I don't have, I don't have my notes. But you know, uh, Cody McKenzie's in there. Dennis Holman was and just uh, pulled out. There's a total of four uh, UFC veterans uh, of names that people would recognize. 
And, and even if you just look at Cody McKenzie, you know, he fought Chad Mendez at 145 pounds. Dennis Hallman uh, finished his career at, at 170 and, and, and went as high as 185. Um, so it, it's a lot of guys that have raised their hand because they understand what's at stake here, particularly when you factor in uh, the exposure and all of the pay-per-view uh, deals that somehow uh, the leaders at Battleground got put in place. It's very hard to get anything on pay-per-view, uh, and they landed every single uh, pay-per-view uh, carry network uh, within our country. So th- there's just a lot of exposure. There's a lot of really good things that can happen. There's very few bad things that can happen uh, when you go into an environment like this. But I hate to make predictions. There's one thing I learned from working with Kenny Florian uh, on UFC tonight. If you're, if you're going to announce a show, don't make a prediction. Just talk about the show as a, as a nice, broad thing uh, to make sure that you don't inject any kind of bias. So let me leave it at that. But, you know, it, it's eight guys, four UFC veterans, and they're all studs. Well, you know, that, that's, the, that's the thing where, it's from, at least from a broadcast standpoint, you and I um, have different styles. Obviously, but my whole style is that I make the prediction and then lie on my sword when I'm wrong, and then you know celebrate um, as humbly as 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 possible when I win. But there, um, I always like making these predictions. I like to see where, where I'm at. And I like to get I like to get the the uh, the crowd uh, kind of either booing for me or, or, or cheering with me as I'm sitting here talking about the fight. With that being said, and also that maybe only five or six people actually hear this interview, why don't you just go ahead and give us your prediction for this fight? <laughs> no, not working. I, no. I appreciate that, but you know, it's, uh, let's wait. Let's just see how it plays out. Like I said, Dennis Hallman did just pull out, which means there's an open slot. Yeah. Uh, who, who knows who's going to fill that? Uh, so there is a couple of moving parts there, but yeah, you know, I don't particularly care anyway. You, you know, I will look. It's kind of like a soldier that, that, that enlists while a war is going on. Uh, you know, you just look at that guy different and go, wow, what a stud. You know, that's that's real courage. You know exactly what's going to happen when you get at a boot camp. And, you know, these guys uh, in that same vein, man, they know what's going on. They're going to fight three men in one night. The, the reason the tournament went away, I don't care how good you are, man. John Jones can't take out three men in one night. Uh, you, you, just, you just can't. Uh, you know, it's just very hard to get through one of those tournaments. So it's it's, it's going to be very interesting. I, I love these things because you see a lot more than just skill. You get to see skill in the first round. But after that, skill becomes a number three or four thing that gets you through. You know, right. it's it's attrition and diversity and, and, and heart and guts. And uh, it, it, those are the things that you're for sure going to see, not, not a maybe about it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this, Chell, as, uh, as we're sitting here talking, they just made the announcement. Dennis Hallman pulled out and Chris Honeycutt pulled out, but they've been replaced by Joe Ray and Jesse Taylor. So you actually oh, get wow. a well, tougher go. competitor with Jesse Taylor oh. jumping in now and getting Hallman out. So it's been this, these are two, two guys in my mind that are tougher competitors than the two that pulled out. So this has now become yeah. an astronomical tournament of trying to fight in one night. And Taylor will do well. You know, Taylor's an old division one wrestler. He was in the Pac-10. Uh, yeah. uh, he was out of Fullerton, I believe. And, uh, yeah, man, he, he's going to do well. I just trained with him. I was out at Henderson's gym in Temecula. He's big. Yeah, he's huge. very big. So when you factor guys like Cody McKenzie and these other guys in there, you know, it just brings it back even more to that, that original feel uh, that got this entire industry going. So I like that. Now, Honeycutt was a disappointment for me because I was very excited to see him. He was an NCAA runner-up at 197 pounds. The weight of this tournament is 170. I didn't know how he was going to make the weight. I don't know why he pulled out, but my own suspicion is uh, because yeah. of the weight that he just uh, just said, look, I'm an 85 pounder. I can't go all the way down to you know, he may even be a light heavyweight. I, I don't know how he thought he was going to make 170, but I'm I'm speaking out of turn here. I haven't yeah. visited with him. I just uh, uh, just a guy seeing off the press releases I read. But he, you know that if he when he was in the tournament, Frank, I will tell you that if that's the guy I thought was going to win. Yeah. When yeah. I saw Honeycutt's name, I knew he was making his debut. I knew he was young and hungry and all of that stuff. I thought, well, there's a champion. Well, now, as, as it stands, at least right now at the time of this interview, it's Jesse Taylor, Joe Ray, Cody McKenzie, Brock Larson, Luigi Filarante, Dave Mitchell, uh, Honan Cornetto, and Trey Houston. 
or in the tournament. So this is a, any one of those guys can win this thing on any night. It depends on how it pans out, what the bracketing is, what the matchups are, and how much you know time they spend in having to fight back to back to back. You know, in a in one night. This is going to be an interesting. This is an interesting matchup for sure. No matter how this lays out. Yeah. So all right, Chael. Right, I, I I love it. Well, I'm glad you're back in the back in the booth. I'm glad we get to see you now on a, on a pay per view again. So I'll be watching at home, and, the, and uh, for the folks at home, you should be watching too. Uh, when Chael Stone and Jim Ross get behind the mics for Battlegrounds, uh, Chael, thanks for coming on here. I know I caught you last minute. I appreciate you making a couple of minutes for us here at MMA Oddsbreaker. We'll talk to you soon. Call anytime, buddy. Good to talk to you.